Hello everyone. So, last time you saw me, I was in Northamptonshire trying out my new e-assist. And what I said to you was that on the return journey back to my car, I would make a video for you all about how I fitted the e-assist, which one I'd gone for, and all those sorts of questions. So what happened? Well, three days after I recorded the Northamptonshire video, I flew out to Morocco to visit the in-laws. As you know, I do that pretty much every year. So all the editing took place in Morocco for the Northamptonshire video. And when I posted the Northamptonshire video, everybody was asking lots of questions and there was lots of comments on, on the e-assist. So, having seen all those comments and questions, when it came to editing part two, the return journey, I realised that I hadn't really answered any of the questions and the video just wouldn't have been up to much. So there I was, stuck in Morocco. Ah, not stuck. There was I, enjoying playing Lawrence of Arabia in Morocco and uh, mucking around in some sand dunes. Yeah, enough of that. But uh, the point is, I didn't have Trini with me. So, I couldn't then make another video to catch up with you all about the assist. So, today, I'm out here in rural Essex to make you a video about my e-assist. So how does this e-assist look attached to the trike then? Well I'll show you how I've fitted it. So we'll start at the front. There's the motor itself. So this is the 250 watt TSDZ2 from Tongsheng. As you can see, fairly small motor, almost invisible from that side. From the left hand side you can see it hanging under there just that little motor body so that comes pre-assembled it was really really easy to fit i haven't made a fitting video i did try um, found the camera work quite difficult so i gave up in the end i just wanted to get it fitted so i can go out and have a ride that said if you guys want to see me fitting this i'm quite happy to remove it and put it back again it really was that easy. Probably take me about ooh, all of an hour to remove this and put it back on again. So as I say, leave a comment down below if you'd like to see me fitting it and we'll get that one sorted. I'll do my best with the camera next time. So the Tongsheng kit comes with everything you need for fitting to the trike, except for the pedals and for this. That's a P-clip that I needed to buy to fit around the boom. So there's a bolt under here that would normally have a bracket attached to it as part of the kit. And that bracket attaches the motor onto the down tube on an up wrong bike. Obviously on a trike that doesn't fit because the trike doesn't have a down tube, but it does have a boom. So it's necessary to buy this P-clip that then attaches through the bolt hole and around the boom. So if I can get the camera straight and hold it steady, it stops the motor from pivoting around the bottom bracket and holds it nice and steady. But apart from that, the P-clip and the pedals, everything else you need is in the kit. So whilst we're under here, 
there are three cables that are already pre-attached to the motor. They come out of the rear of the motor and the cables are colour coded. I think you can see one there, yeah. So those three cables attach to the battery, the speed sensor and the controller. So as with everything with this kit, there's nothing complicated with the speed sensor at all. It's your usual magnet type speed sensor. The magnet attaches to one of the spokes and as it passes the speed sensor, which is attached to the frame here, a couple of cable ties to hold that on, it registers the number of times that the wheel is rotating and tells the controller exactly how fast you're going. So that cable runs down to the motor and plugs in where you've just seen at the other end one of those three cables. Now because a trike is a little bit longer than an uprong in that respect I had to buy an extension cable for the speed sensor from the company who sold the kit. Again colour coded extension kit so they just plug in really really simply. The second of those three wires goes to the controller which as you can see there I've mounted at the top of one of my stand assist bars in my cockpit. I can move that up and down he says. I can move that up and down like that so if I get sun reflecting in it or what have you it's adjustable and the controls on there are the same as pretty much any mid-drive motor. You've got your plus and minus and all the information and on and off switch and as you can see the cables running down the stand assist and just attaches straight into the motor again it's just a simple case of putting that on there with a handlebar clamp which comes as part of the kit really really simple so over the three cables that come out of the back of the motor the third one is the one that runs to the battery. So let's have a quick look at the battery that I bought. So I decided to go with this battery pack. Um, I'll give you a couple of reasons why in a moment. But this is a 36 volt battery. It's 10 and a half amp hours. And as you can see, it's about the size, if not the length, certainly the width of a drinks bottle, a bike drinks bottle. The socket is in the bottom. That's the discharge socket. The charging port is here and the on-off switch right next to it. Now I've been told by the company that I bought these off that they contain Panasonic power cells in there, so they're quality cells. Though I have checked all this writing on the bottom there and on the box that they came in and everything to do with them, all the paperwork, and I cannot find anywhere where it tells me what sort of cells are contained in this. But there we go, I'm told this contains the Panasonic quality cells, so we'll have to just go with that, I guess. Have to take them on trust at some times, I guess. So why did I go for the bottle-shaped battery? Well, first reason is weight. Obviously smaller battery, less weight, even though it's got a lower capacity, obviously. But one of my main concerns in my mini-series, you'll recall, was that I wanted to try and keep the weight down, even though I'd have an e-assist. I didn't want to necessarily overload the trike for times when I'm not using the battery, or if the battery runs out, I don't want to be left with a big lump that I can't possibly push along with my, my legs. So initial thoughts on this battery? Yeah, I'm quite happy with it at the moment. So on my Northamptonshire video that you saw me do, I did uh, 30 miles that day, and when I got back to the car I still had two bars left on the controller out of five. That said, that was a very flat run, although I was mucking around with the e-assist, it was the first proper ride that I'd done with it. So I would imagine I'm, I'm probably looking at somewhere within the 30 mile range, this battery. We'll see how that goes. And just one additional little extra, as with most of these batteries these days, this one's no exception, has a little USB charging port there so if my phone's getting a bit low on charge or any of my other gadgets that I'm carrying we can plug in the USB there and charge them up. It's just a handy little thing to have. So 
just a few more views of the motor from different angles then as you can see it's pretty unobtrusive really isn't it this is the view that I particularly like i.e. I can't see it So you can see how the battery's only just slightly wider than the boom. So there's no way that's getting in the way of my legs going up and down as I'm pedalling. So there we go guys, that's my e-assist and the way I fitted it to Trini. Any questions, please do ask below in the comments. If we get any juicy questions, I might have to make another video. But we'll see. And as I said earlier, if you'd like to see me making a fitting video for the Tongsheng, ask away. I really don't think it'll be that big a problem. Oh look, there's a deer. It's funny what you get to see. I hope I caught that on camera. So where was I? Oh yes, fitting video. Yeah, if you want to see me fitting the assist, no problem, no problem at all. It really is that easy. Morning. And just in case you're wondering, no, it's switched off at the moment. I'm pedalling under my own power. And I shall continue to do as much of that as I can. So that's it for this one then, guys. Just a short one to show you what I've done with the assist. We'll be talking lots more about the assist in upcoming videos, I'm sure. As we go different places on different rides, we'll see how well it works. Right, this weather's too nice to keep the camera out. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Ta-da.